Hey there, guys, and welcome to the Talking Tech Podcast, a sonographer's guide to entrepreneurship. I am your host, Jennifer Lindsay, and today I am really excited to chat with you about investing in yourself as we move into this new normal. I know probably like many of you scrolling on social media when we have a moment, I see a lot of people working from home. I see some people bored <laughs> to death because they're at home. They're trying to help their kids with all their e-learning and all of these different things. And that's the reality for a lot of people. But for this community here, for you as sonographers, that's not your reality. You guys are on the front lines. Um, if you're working in hospitals, you're really on the front lines. If you're working in you know, physician offices or um, imaging centers, your day-to-day -day looks a lot different than it used to. And so I really want to help sonographers have a resource during this time, especially because you don't have a voice anywhere. And I hope, I hope that we can give some resources today and some, some kind of vision casting today for what things look like as we move into this new normal. And so I really want to thank each and every one of you because you are such an important part of the healthcare team. And I don't think people say that enough directly to ultrasound techs. And so I want you guys to know my absolute gratitude for everything that you're doing out there. Um, a lot of you may not know this, I'm not a tech myself. Um, when we started our mobile ultrasound business, uh, we hired the technologist, we partnered with the radiologist, and we have really done kind of the business side from the beginning. I definitely think it's easier to start this business as a tech yourself. Um, and that is 99.9% .9 of all of the students that work with us are ultrasound techs, you know, starting their own business. And so, um, I especially am grateful to you because I know I'm not able to be out there on the front lines and our staff for our mobile ultrasound business are, and I appreciate them so, so much um, because they're the ones that have to be out there with the patients and with the community every single day. So I think what's important now is to kind of start reflecting on what has happened. This is obviously an unprecedented time in our world, not just our country, but in our world. And so I think what we need to do is really focus on you and give techs kind of permission to think about how to invest in yourself as we head into this new normal, because it's going to be different. And I'm talking with techs every single day through you know DMs, through my social media, people are emailing me, we've been setting up um, you know, tons of discovery calls. I'll talk about kind of all these resources later too. Um, but people are wanting and ready to invest in themselves and saying, I don't like how this has affected me and my family because I don't have control over the way that I provide patient care. And I think now more than ever, which makes me so proud, is that techs are seeing the opportunity to be able to do something for themselves and be able to provide a service in a way that they feel comfortable providing it. And so I wanted to just kind of talk a little bit first though about taking, about, taking inventory on what is most important to you in your life. I know I've done this personally and I wanted to give you guys kind of a few examples of some things that I've been thinking about and that I've been taking inventory on to give you guys maybe a jump start on putting together your own list. Um, I think anytime we go through a um, kind of a tragic circumstance, I mean, this has completely uprooted everyone's lives. Everything is totally different. Um, you know, even if we haven't known someone who's been affected by this personally, I mean, you guys are out on the front lines and you're seeing this every single day. Our economy has basically shut down. You know, there's just a ton of things that are, are so, so different. And so it's been a very big shock, I think, to all of us um, because it's just so different than normal. And so I think when these types of things happen, we have to take inventory of what's important in our lives and do more of that when this starts to all settle down. I know for me, I was super sick at the end of January. 
yikes. <laughs> and I remember at the time, um, and I, I've mentioned this in a few of my social posts, just getting a little bit personal here. I have some um, medical issues. I've got a, a metabolic disorder, which causes a lot of trouble with my insulin resistance. And so I have to be really careful about what I eat. So I basically eat as though I am a diabetic. I try to. <laughs> I was kind of off the rails this winter. Um, it is so just dark and dreary and rainy and snowy in Indiana in the winter. And every year I question why in the world I live here. But every year I'm still here. So I think that gets to me sometimes. We can't really go outside. We don't have mountains. We don't get a ton of snow. And so it's not like we can even go outside and play in the snow a bunch or, you know, I have a, I have a son and so that's fun. But um, when it does happen, but it's just one of those um, climates where it's just not really conducive to going outside and doing things um, like it is in other areas that get a ton of snow and there's a bunch of activities you can do surrounding that. So it's just one of those things where we're inside all the time. We're not doing a whole lot. And all of us here in Indiana just get very, very ready for spring very early on. I mean, I'm ready like December 26th. So um, I was just kind of off the rails with just, you know, making sure I was eating what I needed to eat and, and exercising as much as I usually do. And so when I got sick at the end of January, that was something where I was like, man, you know, they're talking about how bad this flu season is this year. I really need to like up my game and make sure that I'm eating healthy. And I'm so glad I did because we all know our bodies behave best when we fuel them correctly. And so I know that's something that's on my list just to help you guys kind of come up with some things on yours. That's one of the things that's on my list is just to really continue to fuel my body well so that as we move into this new normal where heavens knows how you know much this is going to come back up next fall um, when flu season is back. But it'll allow me to be as healthy as I can be in the future. And so those are some things that are on my list. I have loved, because I mentioned I'm not a tech, I am working from home um, and my son is two and a half and he's not going to daycare. And so even though it's extremely difficult to get a whole lot done with a two and a half year old, I have felt so blessed to have been able to spend this much time with him. And so I think maybe when things get back to normal, that's going to look a little bit different just because I, I have loved so much being able to have that opportunity to be with him even more than I was before. Um, I really had had him late in life. And so, um, you know, spending a lot of time with him, of course, has been a priority for me. And so I've juggled around work a lot after having him to be able to spend as much time as possible. But I think that might even look a little bit different after this. So that's kind of number two on my list. And then really just not taking for granted the fact that I can see family and friends. Um, it's just so, so crazy that we're kind of all hunkered down and haven't seen um, friends or family in person for so long. Um, and I think that's something that we just really, for me especially, I think is on my list to make sure that I'm just a lot more grateful for the time that I do get to spend when we are able to go, you know, back out for dinner and have people over to our house for dinner or um, barbecue in the backyard once it gets warm outside. Those are things that I'm really looking forward to and I know are on my list to do more of and to be more grateful for. Um, so those are three things for me. So my health, my family, and just being grateful for the time that I can spend with the people that I love. And so I think... All of us need to kind of put that list together and say, what are the things that are so important to me that I want to make sure I do more of after this all kind of settles down? Because I think right now we're all in just a big hustle, <laughs> trying to trying to get by day by day, right? Um, I think the next thing that I really want to talk about is investing in yourself. So like I mentioned, I've had so many texts um, messaging me setting up calls with me to really talk about options that they have after this kind of settles down and i think we're we're getting to the point where you know we'll see this this shift to kind of reopening things getting things back um, going where they need to be as far as the economy goes um but what i find very interesting and hang on with me here for a second because i think one of the things that is 
scary about business ownership is that it's a risk, right? And it is a risk. Being in business for yourself is a risk. But we have 22 million Americans who have filed for unemployment throughout this entire COVID situation. And I guarantee you a lot of them, most maybe, thought their job was secure. So we're not really in the control that we think we are in, right? I mean, I know for me, if I was, let's say, a restaurant server, I would in my head think I, I you know, can easily go get a job somewhere else tomorrow if I lost my job today. Because the restaurant industry is big, everybody's always needing servers, there's a million different places to serve, there's a million different places to go. But that has basically been shut down. I mean, they're on like skeleton crews right now here in Indiana because we're not allowed to go into restaurants. I'm sure most states are like that. We're not allowed to go into restaurants. All we can do is pick up takeout if we want. And so, um, you know, some people don't even feel comfortable getting takeout. So obviously their numbers are way, way down and they're running on skeleton crews and there's people that cannot find a job um, in all different industries. I'm just using that one as an example. And I'm sure it's like that for some of you sonographers, perhaps, that are listening. You know, maybe you worked somewhere where um, a lot of the ultrasounds you're doing aren't emergent. And so they're kind of waiting to be able to start doing some more of those types of scans once this kind of crisis part of this COVID situation is over. And so I think everybody is just in a situation where they're realizing what they thought they had control over and what they thought was such a... Um, a job that had so much security really wasn't that way. And so I 1000 times over would bet on myself rather than betting on an employer to help me keep my job. Um, and while it is a risk to have your own business, being in control of that business and being in control of during a situation like this, how we provide services to our patients for our mobile business um, is, is critical. And being able to shift kind of on a dime. I know what we've seen in our business you know, our numbers for non-emergent exams are down for sure. I mean, I'm sure they're down everywhere for that. But what we're seeing is a shift. And what we did immediately when all of this happened was we reached out to a lot of our local groups that maybe we wouldn't have worked with necessarily um, hospitals, for example. Hospitals don't need a mobile group, right? They've got their own imaging center inside the hospital, all of that. But we're seeing patients coming to us because they can't get into the hospital because the hospital is only taking the most emergent exams. And so we have seen, for example, a ton of OB patients that we're seeing now because they can't get into the hospital, um, but still, of course, need their OB exams. I mean, so we've been able to shift and pivot and, and really get together as a team and decide how we want to show up for our clients, our physician clients, and how we want to show up for the patients, um, what our techs feel comfortable doing and not doing, what type of equipment they feel comfortable having and not having. And so it's been so amazing to be able to pivot and do that on our own terms. Um, I actually had a discovery call the other day with a gal and she actually had spoken to me probably five or six years ago, considering starting her own business, um, wanted a little bit more information on some of our services and that kind of thing. And so I remember her from then. And she said, Jennifer, I spoke to you probably five or six years ago, kind of just, you know, going back and forth about the idea. I thought it would be um, something I'd like to do in the future, just wasn't kind of sure when. And then she got this job um, at a hospital that she really liked and kind of, a, I think it was kind of a rural area. And so she felt like she was really helping the, the patient population in that area be able to have access to services by taking this job and being able to provide ultrasounds for them. And uh, we had a call uh, this week, early this week, because she walked in one day and the majority of her patients were COVID positive, or I think potentially COVID positive, and they didn't have any type of PPE for her, not even a mask. And they expected her to go in and provide ultrasound services to these patients. Um, you guys know how close you are to patients. That's not okay. And so she took PTO time and basically said, I am out for a while and scheduled a call with me and said, I've got to be doing this on my own terms. So proud of her because, like I said, starting a business is, is risky and scary and all of those things when you first start considering it. But man, to be able to provide these services on your own terms, especially in situations like this, is key. It's key. And we don't have the control that we thought we did in 
um, an employment situation where we are the employee. So I, I love that and I, I've been getting so many messages and so many calls with that specific message. Um, I'm ready to do something on my own. And so because of that, I know probably lots of you are feeling the same way or considering it or rolling, or, or rolling that idea around in your head. And so I wanna give you some resources to be able to do that. So first of all, if you're listening to this podcast, you know I already have a podcast, but I've done a ton lately. If you're very new here, I've done a lot lately, um, really kind of more mini trainings. Um, I did one a couple weeks ago on sales and marketing, and I literally gave you our five-step sales process that we teach to our students. Now, of course, when we teach to our students, we go in super detailed and get down to call scripts and what you say to the doctor when you go in and chat with them and all of these different things. Um, but I gave you a great five-step process overview. So um, if you're interested in kind of what that looks like and how it looks going into the physician offices, um, what it looks like before that, finding those doctors, finding out who's qualified, who isn't, those types of things, go listen to that podcast. That's a wonderful resource for you guys there. I've got others on, um, you know, things to consider when you're looking at starting up. If you're super new to considering this option, um, we've got some wonderful freebies on our website. Um, just go to AIC-Ultrasound. Dot com. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, I've got some freebies right there. There's two freebies that you can download as like cheat sheet kind of ebook things. Um, and then there's a, a link in the middle right now as I'm recording this, but it looks like now is there's that mini training, I think on sales and marketing I've got up there on the website, but it's all the way down at the bottom of the page, um, right there, easily accessible. And then if you click on the about um, link on our website, you will see a picture of me there and different ways to connect with me. So I would love if you have questions, if you're considering starting your business, if you need additional resources um, to kind of study up on this and learn more about what that looks like starting a business, please email me, please message me on social media, please schedule a call with me. If this is something you're like, hey, I'm really thinking about getting something going here maybe this summer, um, that time frame is completely doable. There's certain things that need to happen before you start your business. So um, before you're out there actually marketing to doctors, you've got to get the business set up. You've got to get your marketing materials done. And so we have actually added on quite a few one-on-one um, -on -one students in the last month because they want to be ready to get out there and market to their doctors when summer comes around. And there's a lot of back end, you know, initial business setup stuff that you have to do before you can get out there and do that. And so by the time the doctor's offices are open and ready for us to be able to go out as vendors, they're gonna be set up and ready to go. Um, we have a group coaching uh, session that opens in June. And I'm not exactly sure how many students we are gonna be accepting at that point. We wanna keep it small so that people have you know, access to um, I think for this one, we're gonna add in some group coaching calls and some other things too, because we wanna be as much of a resource to you guys as possible. Um, and we also do one-on-one -on -one coaching too. So there's quite a few different resources right there on our website. It's AIC-Ultrasound.com. And I just want to be that resource for you guys. There's not a resource and there's not this type of stuff for sonographers. And um, we wanna be that for you. So. I will wrap it up here today, but I want to just thank you guys so much for everything that you are doing for the patients in your community. I wanna tell you how proud you should be of yourselves. Um, like I said, I know sonographers get just kind of that overlook a lot of times. People talk, always talk about the nurses and the doctors and sonographers are such, such, such an essential part of the healthcare team. And so you guys should be so proud of what you're doing now. And I just want you to have the resources you need so that if you're considering doing something on your own, you've got those at your fingertips. And so if you've got questions, please message me. If you wanna schedule a call, I'm happy to chat. You can do that right on our website. Like I said, just go to that about page, scroll down down by my picture and you'll see a place to schedule that. Um, I've got actually multiple ones scheduled for next week. So I'm, I love that people are taking advantage of that option. Um, but I am so excited to be able to offer these different resources to you guys and would love for you to take advantage. So I'm going to wrap it up for today. Message me, let me know what you guys think, what questions you have, and I'll see you next week.